Hello everyone, welcome again. So in our previous video, we discussed the design that we are going to use. Now let us start the implementation. So inside this package, I'm going to create an interface. And let me call it as iDataReader. Inside this interface, we will have two methods. The first method is to read all the rows from the given Excel file. And the second method is for reading a single row. And in our previous video, we already discussed that we are going to use this data structure for storing the data. So the return type of this method will be list of map. And the key is of type string. And value is also type string. In the similar manner, I will create another method. And the return type of this method will be map of string and string. After this, I'm going to create the Excel configuration. And for that, I will use the builder design pattern. It is not necessary that you should use the builder design pattern. You can use any other design pattern. But for this implementation, I will go with the builder design pattern. Inside this class, I'm going to create some private fields. So file name variable for storing the name of the Excel file, file location variable for storing the location of the Excel file, sheet name for storing the name of the sheet from which we want to read the data. By default, I'm setting the index variable to minus one. This represents that user want to read all the rows from the Excel file. Now to initialize all these variables, I'm going to create a private constructor. And the reason I have created the private constructor is because I'm going to create a nested static class and that class is going to create the instance of Excel configuration for us. And the nested class name is Excel configuration builder. And this is the class whose responsibility is to initialize all this set of variables by calling this private constructor. To retrieve the value of all these variables, let me create the getter methods. And inside the Excel configuration builder class, I'm going to create the set of methods that is going to set the value for all these variables. This method that is set file name is going to return us the type as Excel configuration builder so that we can invoke other setter method on the same object. In addition to all this setter method, I will add one more method called build method. And the responsibility of the build method is to create the instance of this class. So the return type of the build method will be Excel configuration. So when I call the build method, it is going to create the object of this class. But before I create the object, I'm going to add the validation on all these three properties because these are the three metadata which we need to read the Excel file. To add the validation, I'm going to call the method from the objects class. So this is objects with S, not require, not null. So this will make sure that we initialize the value of all these variables. And then I will add the return statement. So whenever I call the build method, I will get the instance of the Excel configuration. And using the instance of the Excel configuration, I can get the value of all the metadata. 
So after this, I'm going to create a Excel data reader. And this class is going to implement our iData reader interface. So as we are implementing the interface, we need to provide the implementation of these two methods. So inside this class, following are the methods which I'm going to create. The first method to get the instance of the workbook. So basically this is the object which will point to the Excel file. Then using the workbook object, I will get the sheet. Another method to get the header from the Excel file. So let me implement the first method. So this is the class which is coming from the Apache POI framework. Now, in order to get the configuration, that is, what is the name of file, what is the location, I need to inject the Excel configuration object inside this class. For that, I will use the constructor. I will also create a private variable of type Excel configuration and initialize this variable in the constructor. Once we have set up the configuration, I don't want that the configuration should change throughout the entire lifecycle. And that is why I will make this as final. And then using the config object, I can get the location of the file. So config dot get file location. So this is going to throw us the checked exception. So I will add the throws clause with the method. Then we will create another method for getting the sheet. And the parameter to this method is the object of the workbook. Workbook dot get sheet. And the sheet name can be get by using the config object. And then we are going to implement the method that is going to get the headers from the Excel file. And the return type of this method is list of string. And the parameter which we need to pass in this method is of type sheet. As we know in our Excel file, the row which is at zeroth index represent the header. So I will use the index zero to get that particular row. So first let me create a list for storing the headers. And then I will get the first row using the sheet object. So sheet dot get the row and the index is zero. And this method is going to return the object of row And then I'm going to iterate over all the column, which is pointed by this row. To iterate over all the column present in a given row, I will use the for each loop. So row dot for each. As you can see here, the parameter to the for each method is a consumer, which is of type cell. So here I will create a consumer. The consumer is a functional interface provided by the Java. And type is cell. And in the implementation of this method, I will read the header and add the header to this list. So headers dot add and t dot get string value. So this is going to return us the string value. I can further optimize this code by replacing it with a lambda. And then I'm going to return the list that contain the headers. After creating a list of headers, I want to make sure that it should not be modified. 
and that is why I'm going to make this list as a read-only list. So return collections dot unmodifiable list and pass our list name. So this is going to make our list as a read-only list. Now let us start the implementation of this method. So first I'm going to create a variable of this type. So after this, I'm going to use try catch block. And here I will get the object of the workbook. So when you are using this kind of expression, the try catch block will automatically invoke the close method on this object. So basically, this is also known as try with resource. Now inside this try catch block, in case if there is an exception, I will log it. For logging the exception, I will create a variable. So private logger. Make sure that the logger is coming from Cucumber framework. And then I will initialize it with the help of logger factory. And I will use this logger for locking the exception. So logger dot error. This is our exception object. Then I will create a new supplier. So new supplier. Supplier is another functional interface that is coming from the Java framework. And here I'm going to simply return the message. And once we hit the exception, I'm going to return the empty list. So for that, again, I will use a utility method from the collection framework. And again, this entire expression can be replaced with the help of Lambda. So if we do not have any exception, I'm going to return this list. And when I'm going to return this list, again, I will make this list as read only. And it's the same reason. I don't want any other method outside this class to modify this list. Collection dot make read only. Now let us implement the code inside the try catch block. So first we will get the sheet using the workbook object. And after that we will get the headers. Let me do one thing. Let me create another separate method to provide the implementation. So private. The return type will be same as of this. Get data. And the parameter to this method is of type sheet. And let me also create a variable of this type. So once we have the headers, we are going to iterate over all the rows which is present in the Excel file and add it to this list. So for int i equal to 1. And the reason I'm starting the loop from i equal to 1 is because at the 0th index, the row is for the headers. Then i is less than equal to sheet dot get last row num. So this is going to return as the index of the last row. And i plus plus. So inside this for loop, I'm going to create the map object. And once I have the data inside this row map, I will add this map to this list. After this, I'm going to get the row. And then I'm going to execute the for each loop. And inside this for each loop, I'm going to add the data to this map.
I'm going to create one more variable that we'll use for pointing the header index. So after we finish the iterating over one of the row, we need to reset the header index to zero so that for the next row, we will again start reading the header from the zeroth index. And that is why I'm creating this variable inside this for loop. First, I will get the value from the cell. So string cell data equal to t dot get string cell value. And then I will add it to the map. So row map. Let me also extract the header. So string header equal to headers dot get of index and then add both the data into our map. So header comma cell data. After this, I need to increment the header index so that we can get the header from the next column. Okay, as you can see here, we are getting an error because we are inside the for each loop inside this scope we are allowed to access only final variable and in our case header index is not a final variable because its value will keep on changing to solve this problem i am going to create an extension function for for each and let me call it as for each with counter now let us look at the implementation of the for each loop so basically the for each loop iterate over the collection and it invoke the method that is pointed by this variable. So we are going to follow the same process in our extension function also. So the first parameter to this method will be of type iterable and of type cell. And this is coming from the Apache POI framework. And this will be our source. And instead of a consumer, I will pass the by consumer functional interface. So by consumer So by consumer is a functional interface that is coming from the Java framework. This interface can hold the reference of any implementation that takes two arguments and does not return anything. So here I will create a variable int equal to zero that will be used for the index. And then I will use the same pattern what we have here. So instead of this, we will use our source. This is the collection over which we need to iterate. And this will be of type cell. And then I will use our by consumer to invoke the implementation. So I and cell. And after that, I'm going to increment the index. So I'm going to remove this entire piece of code from here and use our for each counter. So our source is row. Now let us look at this class. This class implement row interface and row interface implement the iterable interface which takes the type as cell. So that means the super class of this class is iterable of cell. So that's why I can pass this variable over here. After this, I'm going to provide the implementation of the by consumer. So new by consumer and add the unimplemented method. And in the implementation of this method, first I'm going to get the header and the value and then add those to our map. And again, I can optimize this implementation with the help of lambda expression. 
so basically i need to pass the lambda that takes two argument one is of type integer and second is of type cell and i can further optimize this piece of code by directly placing this expression in the put method and once this loop is over i want to add this map to this list so data dot add row map and in the end i want to return this list so return collection dot read only list data so in this method we are iterating over all the rows present inside the excel sheet and for every row we are iterating over the column to add the value inside our map data structure and then i'm going to call this method inside the method that is get all rows so data equal to get data we pass the sheet object and that's all we need to do in the simpler manner i will implement this method so let me copy this entire code from here to this method i will create an overload version of this method the parameter which i am going to pass is the index that represent that what row we want to read from the excel file so in the implementation of this method we do not need to iterate over all the rows present inside the excel we already have a row index on which we need to iterate so we do not need this for loop and we just pass the row index over here when this method get invoked from the sheet object we will use this row index to get that row and then iterate over all the column pointed by this row and create a map out of it and then return the map so let me change the return type of this method to map of string and i'm going to call this method inside this method so using the config object i can get the index okay so our implementation is done now let us use this implementation in our step definition in order to use this implementation in the step definition we need to register this implementation with the cucumber framework and to register the implementation these are the steps which i'm going to follow inside the step definition i will create a separate method the parameter to this method will be a map object the return type of this method will be the user defined and in our case we have created a interface for that i data reader and that will be the return type of the method we need to use the annotation with that method and the annotation is at the rate data table type this annotation will let the cucumber framework know that we have a different implementation for converting the data table so public i data reader excel to data table the parameter to this method is of type map object this object will be injected automatically by the cucumber framework and it will contain the value in the form of header and column value that means the key will be the header and the value will be column value so in the current case it will be something like this map of excel equal to file name then location file location
and so on. I'm going to use the annotation at the rate data table type. In the implementation of this method, we are going to use our Excel configuration object and then create the instance of Excel data reader. So Excel configuration config new Excel configuration dot Excel configuration builder dot set file name and we can retrieve the file name using this map object so entry dot get and the header is excel dot set file location entry dot get location dot set sheet name entry dot get sheet as I mentioned earlier index is an optional column so when I'm calling the method that is set index, I will put a check. So dot set index integer dot value of entry dot get or default. So in case if the column is present, read its value. Otherwise, I will supply a default value. index otherwise the default value is 0 so with this method if the index column is present we will read that value if the index column is not present this call is going to supply a default value that is 0 and after that I will call the build method So now we have the Excel configuration with us. We can simply create the instance of Excel data reader. So return new Excel data reader. And now in the step definition, instead of passing the type as data table, we will pass the type as I data reader. And then I will change the implementation. So this out data table dot get all rows. And let's say if I want to read the third row and first column. So first I will store the value in a variable. So data dot get third row and then get the column header so let me go ahead and run our runner Now let us look at the console. So if you are seeing this error in the console, add this dependency in the pom.xml of your project. So now let us look at the console. You can see here we are able to read all the rows from the given Excel. And this is the value from a specified row with a specific column. If you want to read a specific row from the Excel sheet, we need to add one more column in our data table that is the index column. So index and let's say the value is 3.
and in the step definition we will change the method that is get a single row and then run the runner let us look at the console so this is the value of the third row this entire implementation is designed with a basic assumption the assumption is that the data table will have only two rows the first row is for the headers and the second row is for the metadata of the excel file if you try to add one more row then this implementation won't work So as you can see here, our test script is failed. So that is how you read the data from the Excel file and pass it back to the step definition.